Hello, my name is Tony Brown and I'm going to look at a drying height question for a tidal calculation using Ruon as a second report. The question is, what is the earliest time that a vessel with a draft of 3.6 metres and a squat of 0.3 metres will first be able to pass over a drying height of 0.7 metres on the afternoon of Saturday the 7th of August 2008 on entering Rouen, which is Admiralty Tide Table number 1589 and requires a underkeel clearance of 20%. A quick revision of safety depth. The safety depth is the draft plus the squat plus the safety margin and we usually apply to that a subtractive of the height of tide for safety depth and the next depth after that is the uh, safety margin used by the ECDIS, which is normally called the safety contour. In this question, we have two problems in understanding it. Initially, it is time. Tidal questions are normally set in the local time, for example, the time on the ship's clock. Admiralty tide tables, however, quote times for high and low water in the zone time. Now, an Admiralty list of radio signals, volume 2, for time zones and dates of daylight saving time. In the UK, the clocks go forward one hour at 1am on the last Sunday in March, and back one hour at 2am on the last Sunday in October. France changes clocks at exactly the same time, therefore June is in summer time, or daylight saving time. But timetables are written in zone time. France's standard time is zone minus one. That is, we subtract one hour from French clocks to match UK clocks. When the UK goes to daylight saving time, so does France. There is going to be quite a lot involved in this question, so it's worth breaking it down into parts. I would suggest that the first thing I would choose to do is to draw or sketch out the question to understand what it is that's actually required uh, that you need to put into your answer. This helps a lot compared to trying to do the calculation first and then being confused at the end. That can especially happen if you're short of time. Uh, the second part would be to go and find the second report straight away, 1589 Rouen. We need to do a few things here. Um, primarily, we need to find the primary port, which it would be in block capitals above it. We'll look at that in a moment. Then we have to find the tidal curve for that port. And then we have to establish the neap and spring ranges coming from the data sheet. Then draw the required height of tide on the graph. Calculate the high water times for high water and low water and show those on the graph and also show the high water time. Um, where this crosses the height of tide line in number 6 above, we then take the curve to find the answer that we're looking for. Um, but we must adjust the curve um, where it's a dotted line or a solid line to match the deep or spring condition and finally read the answer off. So far so good. First and foremost, I draw the question. Normally, we have questions of draft, charted depth and height of tide, but we have to be clear in our mind where they're measured from, and as we probably realise, they're measured from chart datum. If we go on to the next slide now, um, the three elements on the bottom is to show you um, how you would refine the required height of tide. It's normally equal to the draft plus the clearance minus the charted depth. And to find time when the height is achieved, we use the tidal curve. And finally, to find the present underkill clearance, that will be equal to the charted depth plus the height of tide and minus the draft. But to go back to our question, we're asked about the drying height. So therefore, the height of tide calculated from the Admiralty Tide Tables, will be equal to the draft plus squat plus a safety margin and plus the drying height. So let's look at the figures we would govern. To find the required height of tide, that was draft plus squat plus underkill clearance plus drying height. 
The draft was 3.6 metres, the squat is 0.3. Now together that gives us 3.9 metres. We're just going to round that up to 4 metres. And look for an underkeel clearance allowance of 20%. The UKC 20% would be 0.8 of a metre. Adding it to the initial 3.9, it gives me the safety depth of 4.7 metres that I would like to achieve. My drying height is 0.7 metres, so if I add the two together, then I require a height of tide of 5.3 metres to achieve that safety margin. Now this 5.3 metres I can take straight on to the graph. But before I do that, I need to establish the secondary port tide. The secondary port is 1589 Rouen, which is at the top of the graph that you're now looking at. And above it, before we come to a solid black line, we can see the port 1582 La Havre, and that is shown as the standard port. To the right of the block capitals, we can see where it says C page 234. 234 is the one which will have the graph, which you'll see on the next slide. What else will I do at this stage? Possibly a little check down the times, where we can see that the high water time is to be advanced at midday at 0440, at 4 hours 40 minutes, and for 1700 for 4 hours and 15 minutes. So the high water in Rouen is going to be in advance of that in the standard port of La Havre by 4 hours or so. And we can also glance at the differences in heights of tide um, before we move on. But we have that figure in our mind, the 5.3 metres. So we're going to go and put it onto the graph for the half. And that's the red line you can see now. What else do we get from this? We can see that the spring mean range on the right hand side of the graph is showing as 6.7 metres. And the leaps is showing as 3.8 metres. We haven't yet found out what's happening on our day at the standard port. And that's what we're going to do now. On this sheet, we can see the time zone minus one at the top left hand corner. The standard port is correct, it's France Le Havre, and we have a Latin long for it. And it gives us the times of high water and low water, and also the height of high water and low water in the standard port. The year in the top right hand corner is the 2008 that I've used in this example. Now the block that you can see is a little close so I've expanded that. And as we look at this block for the 7th, the Saturday, we can see that before it at 8 o'clock in the morning we have a, high, a low water of 1.1 metres and at 13.25 French zone time in the standard port we have a high water of 7.6. And we know which low water we're using because we're to ask for the earliest time. So the earliest time would have to be on a rising tide. Subtract the low water from the high water and we get a range on the day of 6.5 metres. And later on we're going to compare that with the figure that we had in the previous sheet for the standard port. Okay, on the next page, we can see the time differences of high water. We record the NEEP in the spring ranges by subtracting the mean high water springs from mean low water springs, the mean low water springs from the mean low water NEEPs. And as we take those out and put them onto our sheet, we find we have some calculating to do. Basically because of the time in this case, the heights of um, tide adjustment are not quite as great um, as the for high water as the time differences are. So what I've done here is to mark out two lines at correct segments. Because we've got from 12 midday to 1700 hours to choose from, that is shown um, on the bottom and then The 440, in fact I've reversed that on here, the 440 I've shown on the bottom to 415 and the 1700, 1200 to 1700 I've shown along the top. We can now see where the time says 1325. 
we have run a parallel line from 1700 to 415 and we've run that down so that it passes through the 1325 hours that gives me a time adjustment of 4 hours 32 minutes now how you build this is up to you whether you use centimeters on the left hand scale and inches on the bottom scale it's whatever happens to be convenient you won't be penalized too much but you should manage to be within about a minute so having done that we put out certain figures 4 hours 32 minutes is the adjustment Le Havre standard time was 13.25 we must work in standard time add the two together they come to 17.57 so far so good but that zone time I can't put that into my answer so what I would be tempted to do now is to add the one hour to bring this to French standard time and that gives me 18.57 so we have another thing now for the graph, 1857 on the, on the bottom for high water, and we had our required height of tide on the left. Final task to do now is to adjust the heights of high water and low water by the correct differential amount for the secondary pour. We notice that we're almost at springs. If the spring rate was six point, uh, the spring range was six point seven, and the neap was three point eight, our actual range on the day at the standard pour was six point five. So we're very close to that. In respect of high water, the, the depth differences are so small, we just accept uh, zero point two. I can interpolate though uh, between the others. Um, and I interpolate between 1.6 and 3.6 and say that the low water adjustment is plus 3.4. So there's two figures in red are going to go forward now into the next section, which are the adjustments. I could have done a crocodile type diagram that you've done for the time to solve that low water problem if I wanted to. So to the next page. The 1.1 low water, add 3.4, brings me 4.5 metres, and the high water, which was 7.6, subtract 0.2, gives me 7.4. That matches the range on the day of 6.5 at the standard port, but the range of the day at the secondary port, you'll notice, is a lot less, um, at 2.9. Now, if we take those two green figures now, place them on the graph, and we can find out where it intersects with the height of tide required. So there we are, the green lines placed on the graph. We have the time of 1857, and all we have to do now is where the height of tide line and the low water, high water second report line meets, that is to say the green line meets with the high height of tide in red. We take that across to the right and drop that down to the bottom and we get the time interval. And this is being shown in yellow and you can see the time interval calculated here is exactly four hours before high water. Very simply then, we have the high water run of 1857, we have an interval of minus four hours, now this is in ship's time, subtract the four hours from that and we have a 1457 hours is the ship's time, so just before 3 p.m is the time that we can first cross that drying height. So I hope that's been of some use and uh, I would look forward to seeing you again at uh, another demonstration later. That's goodbye from T-Star Match.